bleeding into no limit yeah. and uh, definitely dump that back out. Oh, absolutely. But uh, yeah, my limit days are over. I'll only play it in a mix. <laughs> limit is uh, it's one of those games that it just plays differently than a lot of people expect. I think it does. I mean, really, you have. I mean. It's, I think it's sometimes you have to be too. such an animal yeah. in limit. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. <laughs> it, you know, <laughs> Oscar Mayer being here with deuces, my favorite hand personally. I love this hand. I think it just plays super well. Deuces, huh? Yeah, it's my favorite hand in, in poker. Like, I'm really well known in the '40s for literally like never folding deuces. I mean, it's like a, it's not a good equity spot, and it's not like a good thing to do strategically. But it's just your favorite. It's just my hand. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> deuces is my favorite. Everyone has their thing. Well, because the deuce is a safe card, right? They're like, oh, deuce. I'm like, oh, put a deuce. Go ahead. Yeah. So we see a four-way flop here. Ace, queen, eight. So three-bet panda with a double gutter and a backdoor flush draw. Love the double gutted. The jack-10 on this type of board texture is actually really good. It's the strongest draw you're going to have here. Especially with the backdoor flush draw. So with this type of hand, I'd definitely be looking to bet three streets as a bluff. Hmm. Yep. Young Paul with middle pair. Iron with the backdoor net flush draw. Backdoor straight draw. You can see Young Paul, think Young Paul thinking about it, but the problem is he has two players to act behind him. Yeah. That's one really bad thing. If this is heads up, this is like an extremely trivial peel here. But with two players to act behind you, I mean, your your call is going to have to be a lot stronger than in general. Is Oscar coming along? No, no way. <laughs> I mean, Deuces was the nuts there, I'm just yeah. saying. <laughs> <laughs> he had him. <laughs> yeah, Limit Hold'em is kind of a, a goofy game. I guess like a lot of the the players in the pool are definitely very degenerate. And in general, uh, a lot of the people who play the game and who associate with the game can kind of be characters, I would say. One of my frustrations with Limit that I noticed was in, in the actual game, because you can just bet the turn and the river can go check check and you're just going to win against whatever they called with. Or you might bet twice for value against a guy who calls too much, for example. Red picks up the jack eight of diamonds here. Opens the pot. Oscar Mayer Beaner dominated the six and the four of diamonds. Comes along in position. Position very valuable here, though. Queen 10 suited. So one thing is to note here, you guys, is that the, the out-of-position player is dominating the in-position flush draw here. However, in-position hands tend to over-realize their equity, and out-of-position hands tend to under-realize their equity. So even though Oscar Mayer Beaner is, is not a favorite pre-flop here, if this went off heads up, he's very likely to win the money just because of that dynamic. Position is very important in increasing. And he's already value. got a whole history that the table's seen that he's barreled off. Absolutely. The entire stack. 3-bet Banda. Actually, 3-bets out of the big blind here with Queen-10 of clubs for the squeeze play. Revs having none of it, though, and peels. <laughs> Oscar Mayer Beaner getting pretty good odds. Yep. and has a beautiful hand for a spot like this. In a great position. There's going to be around 500 in the pot if he does call, and the effective stack size is going to be around, what is that, 1,500? Mm -hmm. So they're around a 3-1 to one stack to pot ratio two, here. Two, Versus any large bet size on the flop, the only play is going to be all in pretty often. King, Queen, 7. Two clubs, so 3-bit Panda flops, second pair, and a flush draw. This is a really nice hand to take into your donk checking range. I love his donk check. I think it's beautiful. It's going to go check, check, check here, I think, most of the time. Neither other player with any equity. No competition. Anything here from the other two players would be very ballsy. Especially versus a 3-bit check. Turns a 7 of hearts. I think checking again is 3-bit Panda's best play. I like his check once again. I made it I, I made it in the wall. All right, like see Rev looking at him there. That's a live pro looking for reads there. That's 100% what we just saw from seat six there. Very experienced mm -hmm. in what's going on. And Oscar <laughs> is saying, let's go 250 into 450. Kind of a brickish turn. And if he bets both streets here, he might get three of a panda to fold a queen. I mean, the problem is, is that when the flop checks through and now the turn's being bet. So Oscar can have a king in this spot, but it's probably a hand king-jack or worse. I think he's capable of checking back a hand like king-jack in a three-bet pot. Mm. And Flush there complete. is 1250 behind and 950 in the pot. So I think with the way that the, the dynamic has played, with the way the ranges have played out as well, uh, I think our opponent's never going to call an overbet, so I don't think it's a good idea to use an overbet sizing when we are value betting. So I think in this spot, if we're bluffing, we should probably bet pretty small because that's what we're going to do with our value hands as well. So I think in the 950 pot, we might bet something like 340, 350. 
maybe a third pot. It's going to put a queen in a really nasty spot, mm -hmm. and they're going to have to make like a hero call. And we're How not, we shouldn't 400? be bluffing her very often. I think he put 400. I like his sizing at 400. I think it's great. We would do this with a hand like King Jack, King 10, King 9, King 8, a 7. I think that we should play a 7 this way as well. And at least another flush is completed just to add another layer. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, the hearts came in too. That's even better. Too, a little. Even better. 3-bet Panda nutted up here. So to talk about his decision, when he 3-bets preflop and then Donk checks his flop, he's less likely to have a strong king in his range. So his range becomes like a weaker king, a queen, every once in a while a hand like jacks or tens. Turn comes 7 and he check calls. Now he probably doesn't have jacks or tens. He probably just has a queen or a king, a weak king in his range. Most of the time just going to be a hand like ace, queen, queen, ten like we see here. And then the river card comes to 5 and he checks. And Oscar Mayer Beaner bets 400 into around 1,000 at a 40% pot size bet. So he should be folding like 30 to 35% of his range in this spot. Like just as a, an empirical, like how to make your opponent indifferent to bluffing here. And so because of that, the hand like Queen 10 is actually really close. And I think we should be looking at our opponent for LOL live reads in this spot. And we also have the history of the... Absolutely. Absolutely. And also maybe every once in a while Oscar Mayer Beaner bets a hand like King Jack and King 10 on the flop. And so if that's true, if he does bet those hands, you know, maybe 50% of the time on the flop, all of a sudden, Oscar Mayer Beaner's value combinations in this hand are not too wide, and we block his Queen X bets as well. Oh. There's the call. Oh. oh, all in. All in. So he's, what he's decided here is that his hand is one of the best hands that he would fold, and he's decided to turn it into a raise bluff instead. So instead of calling, he was like, I could call here and maybe lose to a hand like Ace Queen or Queen Jack, and I really don't want to do that. Well, actually, he doesn't lose the Queen Jack. He chops the Queen Jack because the seven counterfeits the kicker here. But he's decided that it's the best hand he's going to fold. He'd rather turn it into a raise bluff than call. And he goes to give a quick thank you to everybody who does support the show. Uh, you guys are what allows us to put out the content at all. And I know Feldman's been working really hard on bringing a lot of fresh content for you guys this year as well. You should see a lot of really cool stuff on the schedule in the next six to eight months. Should be good times. Or if you're an Instagrammer and you just want to appeal to your poker vanity. Absolutely. Come on the show. It's great for it. Yeah, it it'll, <laughs> it'll feed that. <laughs> no problem. We're going to raise here from Poker Overkill in the eight hole. The world calls. Flopper. And we will take a four-way flop here. Suited Superman's got what you want. The opposite. Pretty bad flop for Flop. Poker Overkill's ace 10 here. 3-bit Panda pulls ahead in position with top pair. Well, now you got the king jack and then smoking pot odds and the queen jack. That's his hand of Dominated the night. How many man. times has he picked up queen jack? And it's true. So we have a donk check from the preflop raiser. I like the check. And then 3-bit Panda um, bets the king jack here. Smoking has queen jack out of position, does just check call. I think most of the time with a hand like queen jack, we should probably check call, check call, check fold against standard larger sizings. I don't really want to put in a third call here. The problem with having queen jack in this spot is it's more likely your opponent has a value hand mm -hmm. because we block queen 10 and, and those other type of queen x hands. Turns a 10. That's actually a really good card for smoking. We saw him sit up in his chair and lean in a little bit there. 3-bet panda in Nothing. position. I Nothing. don't think no, we want to No, but I mean live reads. Live reads. Oh, for true, him. true. Nothing. I don't know if we want to go for three streets of value here with King Jack. I don't think we get called by Queen Jack on yeah. three streets on a run like this. So I think we should check back this turn. If we do bet this well, turn. Yeah, once you check back this turn, then your opponent most of the times will be like, oh, uh, the, my jack's good. Yeah, You exactly. know, right away, 100%. Yeah. I, and because we can't go for three streets of value and this turn card, like if you think about our range, we have some bluffs in our range. We're going to make some straights, some two pairs, some sets, things like that on a board texture like this. And so because of that, I think we should more polarize our turn betting range. I think this king jack bet is a little mergy. I think it's fine against somebody who's passive. Against somebody who's passive, all of the stuff I just said goes out the window. And you just bet your damn hand for right, value. Absolutely. And then you bet the river like sixth pot for value again. And you're just like, whatever. And if you value cut, whatever. Who cares? Like, yeah. Nice hand. If you, you know win. you're playing against a calling station and the guy that just bet. loves his top pair, yeah, yeah, you're getting your value on Yeah. Me. And you just check back a hand like ace, queen of hearts here and just not care about balance at all. Yeah. You're just like, whatever. You just realize your hand's equity. You're just like, who cares? Yeah. It's more important for me to get my equity when yeah. I hit my hand. That is way more important. Yeah. But if I'm playing against and Brian, if I'm playing against Brian in this hand, I'd probably check back this turn with King Jack. He does get a call, though. It does work out for him. Obviously, Queen Jack's going to call one street, but this is exactly what we talked about. Now it's really hard for him to get a third street of value. See a little bit of head bobbing from 3-Bet Panda there. That's a really big comfort yeah. tell. Oh. There's the check check. Yeah. And kicker kicks. Oh. Send the money. You think it's too thin to go for value there on the river uh, I don't Jack? think he's getting called by Queen Jack. Mm. I don't know smoking you know, very well, but... I mean, like I said, even if the, if I had Queen Jack here, four, it's a four-way flop. What, what, what do you what do you what do you think about what he bet like two thirty, two fifty on turn? He calls. No, he called that. That's what happened on the turn. Yeah. River, 
what do you think about people who bet the exact same amount? I mean, that's the most defensible thing, honestly. But the, the problem with doing that type of line yeah. is like 230 into 7 whatever right. is, is still large enough to where... I don't think Queen Jack should be calling down on a board texture like that. Because either you feel like you're getting... Ryan Thelman can hook you up with a seat. Not too many games in the country you'll see go five bets pre-flop in the best hand. That's the Instagram Literally. special. That's how we do it. Deuces. <laughs> I mean, the other show, people are reshipping pre with seven deuce games. So oh, absolutely. Nines. Uh-oh. Panda's got a hand. Panda, panda, panda. Guys, 175. So far from what I've, I've seen 175? Panda... Oh, is it a fifty? Is there a fifty straddle? Out I think there? there might be. One seventy-five. Three fifty-five. All you can eat. Okay, yeah. I got it. Okay. Yeah, just so give a shout out to Miguel Rodriguez on YouTube as well, man. Thanks for supporting the show. Much love to you, dude. Glad to have you here. I know Feldman's uh, sending you the good vibes over here. Even. All in for 380. Iron comes along here. Oscar Meyer Beaner is all in. I think. Makes a effectively a min raise here. I think that reopens the action here for Three Bit Panda if he wants to re raise again, and he yes. should. Now he re raises once again yes. to protect the <laughs> equity of Nines. Nines is a favorite against Israeli Ron's flatting range, and because of that, Three Bit Panda is allowed to re raise once again here. I was like, what? And Oscar, unfortunately, only has four outs once again here. Somebody just folded ace-jack. I run head ace-jack. Same thing that happened last time. Got to make a set two different ways here. Or ten. Ace of jack or ten. And there, it's not going to do it. Fucking nines. Will hold. Takes the money. Chat is pog champing over real hands. They're like, what the hell? People with real hands. How does that happen? Amazing. <laughs> Smoking pot odds with the ace queen. Real hand. Raised to 35 this time. Last time with Jax, it was 45. You can see Rev on the button calling with some dominated hands sometimes in these spots. However, his post flop skill advantage and the, pack, the fact that he's in position allows him to make up for some of that. And equity. that you're going to get away from things. Yeah. You know, that he has the ability to not. He's not going to stack off on a queen high board. Yeah. yeah, he's not going to stack off on a queen high board. What's going on? Like, uh, oh, Panda's sitting here with tens. Panda with a lot of big pairs bet. today. He's going to go with the three bet. Yeah, you definitely want to put in a raise here. When there's a raise in three callers, your, your hand plays very strong. Heads up and not five ways out of position. <laughs> <laughs> right. so you, you would right. much rather just three bet and, and try to take it down here. Yeah, I mean, if you're set mining with them, I think they're a little strong for that. Everybody just folds here, and he will take it down with the best hand. Fill up your glass first. Yeah, I know, man. Three-bit panda dead in the water here for and he knows it. <laughs> that nose touch there from three-bit panda. If I saw that... And I was in the jack nine in the hijack there. I would go ahead and bet the flop because I know that three bet panda is probably just going to fold with the, the face touch there. Usually in a four or five way pot, body language is a lot more honest because people don't give a shit. Yeah. They're not concerned about giving off as much when they are, as they are when they're playing heads up. Pseudo Superman delay bets this turn after the flop checks through. I wouldn't have hated leading out on the flop with Pseudo Superman's hand because we block a lot of the value combinations. Overkill goes away. Overkill actually just folds jack nine? What? Are you serious? For 130 or whatever that was? I'm avoid the 9 to 5. I'm in here in the booth today with Brian or Bry Poker from Instagram. Yep, yep. It's a pleasure commentating with you today, same sir. Same to you, same yeah. to you. Look forward to uh, the next one that we get to do together. Great. Should be good times. I know um, next month, you guys, for the month of, it's May next, right? Yeah. Sorry, I, I've been playing a lot. Uh, <laughs> so for the month of May, we have a lot of cool stuff coming up. I know we have a, a week of drama that should be fun. Uh, and then once we're through that, uh, I know Fridays <laughs> have been converted into, I believe we're playing.